everybody this is going to be a video on a full 4x8 grow tent uh, rdwc setup recirculating deep water culture setup this is going to be mostly images uh, a small video i can put at the end uh, my setup but i want to walk you guys through from start to end and every part you could possibly need to get this thing done so this is uh basically what i did this is my setup and it looks something like this when you're done I'll show you guys a full few images something like this now um let's start with uh this will be your tent okay i already have my lights hanging i have my fan up here i ended up moving my carbon filter out because i needed more room for my lights to go up but starting with something like this okay so let me show you guys this all right so these are the buckets i bought these buckets from lowe's and i'm going to show and you guys the link and i'm going to put a link in the bottom of the video for everything you're going to need to buy as you can see, they're yellow on the top, and the buckets are actually black. I ended up spray painting them white just to reflect more light. But the top, very important, you have to um, spray paint it black and then white over it so no light goes through it. You do not want any light going through it. Okay? You don't want algae growing in there. So when you're pretty much almost done, you should have a setup looking like this. Okay? So some of the parts you're going to need. You're going to need the buckets. It comes with the lids. And they're like six dollars at Lowe's, pretty cheap actually. You're gonna need two inch PVC pipe, you're gonna need bulkheads, you're gonna need a bunch of stuff that I'm gonna show you one by one on Amazon, and I'll put the links to it too if you want to buy it. Okay, at the end, you're gonna have this T and this this part over here that I made. This over here ended up being useless, I designed this so I could uh, drain out of here, but I ended up just draining from the main res tank, so I ended up not needing it. But you are gonna need this, okay. So it's going to look like this. Uh, another picture like this. You got two fans. Uh, I put one fan on the bottom currently under the canopy, one above the canopy. For now, it's just setting it up. So it looks like that. I wanted to show you guys all the things that I have, and then I'll break it down one by one. So, for example, this is my uh, res reservoir tank. I've actually made some changes here. This pipe is no longer a 5 8 That was too slow. Water wasn't flowing fast enough. I upgraded to a three-quarter pond a pond pipe. I'll show that again. This is a auto top-off, which links to my home's uh, five-stage reverse osmosis water, so it always is topped off with fresh water. In case I'm away or anything, they drink too much, they always have the same amount of water. As you can see over here, bubbling. I ended up actually canceling this out. This was filling from the top. It's supposed to add air to the water. Great, but it was driving me insane. Uh, the sound. So if you're not in the same room as this thing then this is actually a good idea okay if you're in the same room i'll show you guys what i ended up doing with mine i think i took a picture uh from today hold on one second yes right here let me zoom in this is my current currently what's going on in here as you guys can see the tubing has been changed like i said uh if i were you guys i would change this out too put the same tube come in here put a bigger hole and just put it into the water now it just fills right into the bucket with no air in between so it doesn't make that much sound like i said this is a personal preference but anyway you are going to need a uh, couple things like i said i'm gonna go through the whole list but i did uh, set up a 65 gallon backup tank which i filter rodi water in here so it's reverse osmosis and then i bought a di filter popped it on top so the ppm is pretty much zero in this water very clean water and here's the filter itself just regular five stage reverse osmosis water filter that's hooked up to my outside uh garden hose thingy so it just fills in here uh then there's actually i should have taken a picture but i actually put a top off in here too so it shuts this off when this thing is full you want something like that too and this is my carbon filter now being outside from where in the beginning of the picture it showed being inside anyway uh let's get through the parts and i will explain them to uh one by one this is gonna you're gonna end up making two inch these are two inch bulkheads uh so you need a put two inch into the two inch hole saw i will show you guys which one i used with better prices i did all the research everything took me i want to say weeks until i found the best prices best products you, people build these out of three inches but the bulkheads are super expensive and the pipes are hard to come by anyway two inches works great i'm almost like i said at the end of my 
flowering cycle so i'm about to harvest everything went great that's why i wanted to wait till everything was fine until i made a video uh all right so let me bring over the the list of items that i have one second it's a lot bear with me anyway hope you guys can see commander five gallon black tote bucket whatever six dollars comes with the lid no problem but as you guys can see uh i spray painted my white the top yellow like i mentioned spray painted black over it and then white over the black to reflect some light and to not let any light through when you spray paint the lid i recommend holding it up looking at the sun if you can see the sun then the light's going to bleed through anyway this is one thing second what's this all right here's a tent i used like i said all the links of everything i've used are going to be uh in the bottom of the video uh, a regular 4 by 8 tent pretty good price not a big f i buy a lot of vivo sun parts i'm not affiliated with them i just use them i like them some things are good some things are bad whatever you guys could choose uh next thing this is the vivo sun six inch 440 cubic feet per minute uh, carbon filter i bought why did i buy this there's science behind this guys your tent is going to be four feet by eight feet times eight that's 32 square feet if you want to find the cubic feet the height of this is going to be 80 inches which is about six and a half feet so times it by six and a half you have 208 cubic feet of space in here so if you want to remove more air than that to you know not let anything slip out and smell the place you're growing it in you want to get something that's twice the size so that's why i picked the six inch one they also have eight inch and a four inch you save a little money on the four inch a little more on the eight inch but like i said the smaller you go the less air you can move and you want more air moving less humidity blah 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 just better overall next thing deburring tool super important okay super super important when you get your buckets and you make the holes in your buckets with uh this guy right here now let's talk about this real quick you could buy one piece of this at lowe's for like 26 27 30 i don't know if they're expensive one piece i bought this entire set for 18.99 and it has a specific one that you're going to need which i think is the doesn't matter when you get it you'll see it you just take one of these put it over the bulkhead if it's a, if it's smaller than that then it's the one you want to use i'll show you guys in the bulkhead section which size you're going to need okay it actually says it this sets 19 dollars. you use one even if it breaks throw that one away you still have 15 more pieces left you could use one day so i don't know i liked it a lot like i said in my research this is uh we'll talk about this later this is just something i add in my reservoir all the time it's so much cheaper than uh all the other products you buy at the hydroponic store and it works great uh this is a net we're gonna need this let's talk about the i want to show you guys the bulkhead anyway so this is the bulkhead i actually bought it from this website specifically the i'll put a link to this in the video so you could buy it as you can see it's five dollars sixty cents each and on amazon it's 8.39 each all right so it's it's a lot more when you're buying like you know a bunch of them and keep in mind if you have eight bucket uh eight buckets you have the nine out the ninth one outside that's uh eight times two is 16 plus 17 so you need 17 of these plus one or two extra in case you make a mistake so you need about 19 20 of them it adds up anyway uh so this is what i was talking about when you look over here it says that hole size 77 millimeters or three inch okay this is what i was saying this thing has one right very close to that 76 millimeters right here this has one of those fits that perfectly so you buy the buckets you put the two inch holes in it and let me show you guys now come back to this video over here all right as you guys can see i spaced it you want to bring these holes as low as you possibly can so the more the water could drain when you want to drain it okay okay so you put the holes <coughs> you get the bucket bulkheads as you can see over here these bulkheads are inside out this is my mistake i shouldn't have done this but when i was buying the bulkheads they were out of uh, the slip and slip so i got slip and thread so i had to use them vice versa which means these two buckets are permanently stuck and these two are permanently stuck which means if I ever want to take them out of the tent, I got to take them out together. Or if I ever want to separate them, I got to cut this pipe so I could take the bulkhead out. Or else you can't take it out. It's just done. Okay. I just wanted to show that. Anyway, back to here. So you get the buckets. 
you get the whole saw you make the hole right around over here okay you want to measure up a little bit and then make sure you put your bulkhead make sure you don't hit the bottom this is give, give yourself like i don't know a quarter of an inch gap on the bottom as low as you can make the holes put the bulkhead in you're good to go now let's see all the things you're gonna need uh, i got a lot of stuff here guys i did plenty i did all the research this is tool this tool all right it took me a while to figure out what i could use to tighten the bulkheads you are supposed to not need a tool to tighten the bulkhead it's supposed to be hand tight but if you don't use the deburring tool well and you have a minor small leaking here and there you might want to get this tool which helps you just you know because the bulkheads are really they're big and they're really down into the bucket so it's really hard to get your hand in there and tighten them so, and especially there's water inside whatever you could use this tool it's pretty awesome it's made for a car oil car oil filter but it works great on uh on, uh bulkheads as well anyway so things you're gonna need right so we got covered this one this is for that we covered this i'll cover this real quick right now this is something that you could add to your reservoir in general this is uh, just friendly fungicide bike bacteria growing inside of it to keep the bad ones out uh, the regular ones, HydroGuard and UC Roots, there's a bunch of them. They're super expensive. Uh, they're not bad. They're, they're great too, but this is just so much cheaper. It's $8, and you add about to 1 to 2 milliliters, let's say 2, per 10 gallons. So my setup, this setup right now that I have running specifically, this is about 30, 30 to 35 gallons total water in everything, res and all these together. So I add about... I want to say six milliliters every time I do a water change keeps it great it works out just fine okay that's this next you're gonna need a scrog nut okay uh, tent net I don't know you can do whatever you want I'm just saying what I used it comes with two of them you attach them you know a four four by four and four by four makes an eight by four that's that it's very simple you do want to get these fans um, I did have a problem when I bought these. One out of the two stopped working, so I got a replacement. It worked out just great. Now I've had them on for three months, no problems. Water pumps. All right, this is uh, important. I am using a 550 gallon per hour, per hour. I would suggest going with a thousand. Okay, and what I will suggest to do into some of the mistakes I made that I will fix on my next setup, which I don't have yet, which I want to have, is I want to show you guys right here, for example. Right over here, you want to cut the pipe, okay, and put a on-off valve, okay? Put an on-off valve so you can turn off the water anytime you want and change your pump if, if something goes wrong with your pump. Right now with my current setup, which is this actually, if anything happens to my pump, I have to drain my entire reservoir, all the water and everything, or else it's going to leak everywhere. If I take this out, this water will leak out. So it's a good idea to cut this over here, put a, you know, I don't know, a little on off something. So you close the water to the pump. And uh, the reason why I brought this up now is because my pump is 550 gallons per hour. It works just great. But if you get the bigger one, you can pump more water. And if you notice there's too much water being pumped, the way you could tell that, this is something most people won't tell you, is if this water starts filling up in here and actually going up, you got a problem. It's going to just come and fill out. Okay. It's, this is gravity fed, right? You pull the water. You're pulling the water from at the end, right over here. You're sucking the water back. Uh, let's see here. If I have a better image, I could explain it this way. Yes, right over here. As you can see, these two are my last two buckets, right? So the so the water is gravity fed. Comes from right over here, okay? Fills into here, then to here, then to here, then goes to here. When it gets here, the pump pulls it right back to this black pipe all the way out and back to the res if you're pulling faster then gravity can push it back you're gonna have water level dropping here and water filling spilling out of your res and you don't want that obviously so what i was saying is that get a bigger pump get this pump i mean this is good this is thousand gallons per hour and if it is pulling too fast then what i would recommend is you use that uh, thing i just told you you should do is putting the on off right over here and you could just lower the flow a little bit nothing will happen to your pump it's just the water flow will drop and everything will be balanced out so my but this still worked so my point was this i have this one and it's not a matter of price i mean it's i don't know it's 20 it's 41 but it's just more flow the better 
the faster you can circulate your water, the better. Key is to have it circulate all your entire res seven times an hour. So if your total volume is 30 gallons, let's say times seven, you want to do 210 gallons per hour. Now, don't go off of this. It says 550. You don't even get close to 550. There's a lot of resistance in the pipes and all that. So you're, you're getting, I'm getting like, I think 270 gallons per hour. So it's still over the recommended amount, but at the same time, the more the better. So it doesn't really hurt it. Okay. And very important. Oh my God. Get two. If you get this one, get two. This one, get two. You need want to have one on backup. If your pump fails, in theory, nothing will happen to your plants for a few hours. Well, actually, even for a few days because the water is still inside. What I mean by this is this. The beauty is that this whole thing should be leveled. Uh, let me see if I have it. With, let's see here. Oh, there's a video. I'll play that at the end. But anyway, your water level should all be the same. Your reservoir is outside. Hopefully, it's on the same plane as the rest of them. Your water level should be all the same. So if your water pump stops, nothing happens. Okay? It's just the water stops moving. So you have a few hours. But if you buy it from Amazon, it might take two or three days to get one. Or you have to run out to the store, buy one, do like, eh, just buy two, save yourself the headache. Okay. Uh, anyways, we covered that. So we got the water pump part down. If you guys have any questions, please put it in the comments. I'll go in more details later. This is what I bought. I don't think they don't have it right now, but whatever. A 66 gallon collapsible rain barrel. I keep this outside. I don't know if I would trust it to be indoors because it is a collapsible after all, if it collapses. Anyway, this is 66 gallons. As you can see, fresh water, took a picture today. Uh, I keep it all the way full. I got something that was almost twice the size of my entire setup in case I do something wrong and I got to refill it again. If I only have a 30 gallon tank and I used it and something went wrong with the water, I don't know, it spilled or something got in there, whatever. I don't, I can't wait. This thing, yeah, this thing filters uh, 50 gallons per day. So it takes almost 30 hours to fill this thing up. Okay. Can't wait 30 hours without water. Your plants will die. So I got something that's double. And anyway, this is just an idea of how I, my thought process, make your own changes to it. Anyway, so that's, this is this. Uh, you can get you wherever one you want. doesn't matter. And, oh, and by the way, I pump, I, what I do, that's stuff that you really have to think about. Okay. So my, this is, this is inside my garage. The rain barrel is about, I don't know. 15 feet away outside on the wall i just have one of these pumps extra pumps with the hose attached to it so i throw it into that rain barrel and just put the hose in here and then just refill this whole thing back up again i don't know if that helps or not but that's how i do it uh, i'm sure well, your setup will be different next item six inch net pots love them pretty good price i use them it is what it is you only need about eight but they come in 20 pack and they're a great price air stones uh it's debatable people say the more the better but i mean to what point you stop so i put a one in each one again this is personal preference you could put two in each one but it gets kind of pricey 10 of them are 50 dollars uh whatever you need one i have one in each one like i said my grow is going great almost done so we're good now you need this six inch hole saw this is specific not specific but this works perfectly with these net pots I have tested them. I use them myself. This is why I'm going to link it in the description so you can buy exact items. This is the one to make these holes to put these guys in. Okay? Simple as that. Wait, where's Amazon? Here we go. Next item. Air pump. I bought this one. I regret it now. I should have bought this one. It is about $27 more. But get it. Trust me. It pumps more air. Better. Great. This thing has 12 nozzles, I believe. Yeah, 12 outlets. Just close off four of them, okay? Or if you want to put two, uh, like, you know, you want to give half of them, that's 12, you could do, I don't know, half of them double. You, you could use it, whatever. But if you close them off, pressure just goes to the other one, so they all will get more air, period. Now, one-inch tubing float valve kit. You're going to need this if you want to set up what I have here, which is an auto top-off right over here, okay? This comes with it. This elbow comes with it. This is here. This cheap little thing, I'll be honest with you. It's nothing fancy. Uh, this is, like I said, this part, this white part just goes to my home water filter. 
I have a five stage reverse osmosis like the one I showed you picture of outside. I have one inside for my home. I just piggyback off of it and it tops it off. I measure today towards the end of my cycle and these things are using about four and a half, five gallons a day, which is not a big deal. My filter could do 50 gallons a day. All right. Oops, I closed that whole dunks. Anyway, you need that. We talked about these already. Now, mm, what are you going to do for, uh, hold on one second. Let me open up that same thing I just had going. Okay. Now, as you can see, I have this. I use it. I'll swear by it. Uh, it's so much easier when it's always in there. You just take a quick glance at it, put a camera pointing at it. If you're not home, you could tell, you know, it's very important. Your water temperature, your pH and your PPMs for your water. Very important stuff. Now they have these higher end ones. This is a handheld one. This is the one I have right now specifically. And this is the Guardian Monitor Connect, which has some blue USB stick you have to buy for another $80 that connects to your laptop. Yada, yada, that's great, but that's another $100 just for this, plus another $80 for the USB stick. I don't know. You guys could do it. It's the same thing as this, except this thing has some wireless way of uploading the data to your laptop. I just take notes every day. Once a day, I measure the PPM, pH, and move forward. Um, this is the one I have. I don't like these too much, okay, honestly, only because... Um, it's a point in time, like uh, when you put it in your res and you're checking, if something hasn't moved through the whole system yet, it's not going to, you're not going to know. But this, since it's always in your res and the water constantly is flowing, your PPMs adjust after a while. So you constantly see a true value. So this is the one I have. I put a link to it. Like, like I said, link will be there again. Next one, three and a half, three and a quarter inch. Uh, it's called pond tubing. Took me a while to figure this out <laughs> to use for the, the return now. As you can see before, like a genius, I used a 5.8 and everything was great. And then the flow kept slowing down. See here? This is a 5.8 and I was using. A very bad idea. Swapped it out to three and a quarter. Next time I'm going to do a one inch. Okay? So here, as you can see, this is the three quarter. It's 18 bucks. Same thing. There's a one inch diameter. Both links are in the description. This is the bulkheads. I already, I'll put the link to this guy's. Uh, union. You're going to need a union. Okay. Right over here. Let me close these out real quick. There we go. Right here. You need to put a two inch union because you want this to separate. Now, I came out this way. And then made a loop and came back around my, my reses outside over here. You could come straight out too. But there was an air vent over here. I didn't know if I could go underneath it without damaging the air vent. Uh, for the tent, it has one of these. You see, guys, you see one, two, three. There's a fourth one over here. I didn't want to put a hole in it because I like to open those and let air in through there. So I went around. Anyway, it doesn't matter which way you go. This way, this way. You need to put a union so you can separate this part. So this part will separate. This part will separate. So these buckets all will be separate. You could take them out, clean them after a, a cycle or something. Two inch right there. Uh, this is what I got. This is cheaper than clay pebbles. I mean, it's still clay pebbles, I'm sorry, but there's another brand that's like twice the price. Uh, again, nothing fancy. Make sure you rinse them out very, very well. They have this fine mist to them. Rinse it out until your water is clear or else all this stuff is going to go inside your reservoir. You don't want that. Now, do not use white tubing for your airlines okay i see a lot of people buying aquarium tubing which is see-through white or clear i'm sorry not white clear and light could go penetrate through into your buckets through that uh, tubing and algae will start growing i have them another place i made that mistake i'm saying it for that buy yourself this i shall put a link to it or go to lowe's buy one i don't care i use regular quarter inch uh, a drip system irrigation pipes. It's the same thing. Nothing fancy about that. Humidifier. You're gonna need one. Okay. You need a way to monitor the humidity, and you need to you need one that could keep it. So if you're if you there's two things I'm gonna put here. There's one a humidifier. You need one of these guys. Check too. Link is in there too. So either your room is gonna be normally humid, so you're gonna need a dehumidifier, or if it's not, you're gonna need a humidifier. One or the other one. Dehumidifier, or humidifier. It's a great product. My friend has it. I have one. Works great. 
I don't guess like I said I don't work for them just telling you guys what I bought little nine dollars ten dollars best thing ever so you can see I bought it in 2012 still have it okay that's 10 years later okay water chiller very important I don't have one but I'm gonna get one but I've made sure where I'm growing it it's very very cold so I have no problem but which one do you get right I know the price goes higher so you want to go for a cheaper one whatever and that's not the way it works okay whatever your total volume is you need to read this part over here okay look if you set up the one that I'm showing you how to set up you fit right in here you're about 30 to 35 gallons this should work perfectly fine for you but if you use any bigger buckets 8 gallon buckets or 10 gallon 12 gallon 13 gallon I'm sure there's 8s and 13s available not at lows but they are they're available if you use those see for example if you use a eight gallon bucket and you have five gallons in each one that's nine that's nine gallons that's about 50 gallons of water you this might not be enough depending on your climate so you might want to move into this one which will give you 40 gallons to 100 gallons anyway my point is water chillers are not just whichever one you can afford it needs to be specific to yours or you're going to waste money on it okay link is description if you need to buy it the this is the the humidifier is talking about 1500 square feet 3000 whatever get the bigger one or get the lower one it's up to you it's fifth dollar difference doesn't matter this is a they have they have all these fancy water filter systems for growing and you know blah 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 and they're so expensive but what i noticed is that i just use regular home reverse osmosis and you you know set this up and put a di filter which is next on my list right here at the, so what you do is you have this whole setup after the last one where it will show you in the diagram when you buy where it goes to this faucet already that's from over there you hook up this filter di filter and it'll take your water from let's say i don't know 30 40 ppm whatever you have after being clean it'll go to zero basically said so do you need it no should you get it yes it's a, it's a debatable topic you can research it all you want uh so this is the di filter what do i have here oh and this lights i'm currently using spider 2p lights that i actually got from a friend of mine they're pretty expensive they're like 13 1400 each okay let me see if i have a picture of it so i can show you guys what i'm using yes these guys right here these are spider 2ps they're amazing lights but they're super expensive i got it from a friend for a good price but honestly next time i'm getting ready to build another place uh i won't be using them they're too expensive i'm gonna try to actually use these very I've, I've seen a lot of good videos on them on youtube uh people have tried it out they like it and they're as you can tell they're 600 instead of 1300 each okay anyway that's all i have i'm gonna do a real quick cap recap buy the bucket all right spray paint them if you want if you don't they'll just be black they'll absorb light you don't want that and it keeps heat white reflects so better whatever spray paint them okay make your holes right down here put your buckets go you buy yourself two inch uh pvc pipe from lowe's you're gonna need some t's some elbows you can figure that part out okay i just didn't make them i didn't make the video at that time this is what it should look like inside i'm gonna zoom in so you see it now oh by the way this part over here should be back here if you can okay this is too close over here it's pretty much the same but it would have been nicer i wanted to leave this room here for this so i could drain out from here this is why this part this is the end of my uh, setup this should have been back here so your bucket should have been here and here come out 90 elbow come out 90 elbow t over here same t and then just continue down the line okay like i said i did this for a different reason i've never used this part since i built it but this is what it is right buy the buckets spray paint the buckets cut the buckets with the whole saw Put your bulkheads in. This is the faster version now. Measure this up. I did some math, and uh, if you do this in a 48, you know, 4 by 8, you have 8 feet over here. These buckets are 12 inches from here to here. So you have four of them, that's 48, leaves you 48. So you have about 9.5 inches spacing in between them if you want. I left 10 here, I think 10 here, and like I think 8 in between them. That's personal preference, do whatever you want, just leave enough. For this part over here, when you're turning, you want to have some room here so you can work. Other than that, pretty simple, right? Buckets, paint, cut, put the buckets in, glue in your pipes, okay? Follow the, the schematics here, you can look at this picture, pause it anytime you want. Oh. The air pump. I hung my air pump. Let me see if I have a better video. As you can see over here, 
hanging your air pump reduces the noise back i want to say almost 60 percent because the vibration gets transferred and it cuts down the noise so much i i can't say enough just hang it from the top it's simple pretty easy works out just great okay right so we got that let's see what else am i missing anything let me see uh no, this part you guys saw it, same T over here. Like I said, right, I would want this same T to be out here. So, bulkhead here, bulkhead over here, come out, come out, and then over here. But if you move this here, this comes all the way here, so you might not have enough room. So, you might want to leave some room in the back, and then give yourself more room here, and then do this over here. But again, doesn't matter. It works. It works just great. Um, I think, uh, let me look at this list. I think I covered everything, right? Let's see, tent, uh, carbon air filter, yeah, deburring tool. You need this when you make the two inch hole, three inch hole, whatever for the bulkhead. You need this tool to clean the inside. You, If you leave anything on the cut part, it will create a leak, just so you know. And these things don't cut that great, and there's nothing that cuts that great. So it doesn't matter. It's just, you need those. Yeah. Scrog nuts, fans. Yeah, I've covered everything. Okay. Uh, sorry guys for a very long video, but if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment and I'll uh, try to get back to you guys uh, later. Thank you.